this is episode four now of Diversity by the Dozen. Um, so I'm joined with Shweta, who's the CPO for Machine Map. Um, they're an IoT kind of telematics company. Um, before this, obviously, you worked at BCG Digital Ventures as their like, lead product manager. Um, but obviously, Machine Max is a company that I've known for a while now. Um, and one thing that I think is great, that obviously, I know the pandemic may have <laughs> affected, but is that obviously you used to or you have a female at kind of every level of the business. That's true. Um, I don't know if that's changed, but I think that's one thing that I think is quite impressive you know kind of from a small startup being able to achieve something like that um so thank you for joining me um but I thought kind of it would be like a nice place to start obviously kind of working in the industry kind of a number of years and having experienced this like have you noticed like a shift um kind of in the attitude towards diversity over your your last like five years yeah, so thanks for uh, thanks for this call, uh, Katie. Very, very excited to be here. Uh, so answering your questions. So yes, definitely there is a shift in the industry when uh, we've been talking about diversity for almost 10 years now. And previously, people used to do nothing uh, or yeah. maybe just, you know, uh, comply with it and, and be politically correct. Now, mm -hmm. whenever we talk about diversity, um, there is this notion of let's do something about it. So mm -hmm. definitely there is a there is a shift which I have seen in the attitude. However, for me, the important question has always been, is this change what we are talking about is as much as we want? Yeah. And that my answer is uh, there is a still there is still a long way to go. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of kind of talk about it now and, and people are discussing, but it has enough been implemented to kind of reach where we want to. True. So, so if, if you know, when we talk about the, this, obviously this is a great start and there's a long mm. way we have covered, but st I still think there's a long way to go. There are three things like, you know, are we talking about the real problems or is it just a PR um, crisis or a strategy kind of a thing? <laughs> Are there numbers which are helping you prove that you're solving the real problems? And then the number three is what are the real consequences? Have you moved the needle around it? Do we really need to yeah. talk about it? Or is this something uh, we have moved from a problem which was there and now we're trying to solve the different problems on the way? Mm -hmm. We've solved the main aspect of it and we're trying to solve the different problems of it. So that's where my mind is at least. Yeah. Okay. So obviously, as I mentioned, you know, briefly, just like there was a time, or, or there is still now, where you know you had a female at every level. Like, was this then a conscious decision that you or Machine Max made when when hiring, or is it something that just happened, you know, a little bit more kind of organically? A mixture of both. There was always a conscious decision about the culture we want to drive and inclusion and diversity has always been part of it. And um, so for that, we made some conscious choices along the way. And um, and then uh, over a period of time, when we started attracting that kind of a talent, then it grew organically as well. So mm, it happened to both okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in those initial like early stages then, what was it that you would do in order to be able to achieve that? Like what are some of the processes that you followed to be able to get kind of more women within the team? Yeah, so so they could be like, you know, we can talk about big, uh, important programs and people do talk about this having a DNI uh, head, etc. However, for me, I've seen that uh, smaller steps can also make a lot of difference. Like simple things mm -hmm. like, uh, when uh, the recruitment is a funnel, right? So at the beginning of the yeah. funnel itself, where you can tell the recruitment agents that I want to see mix of, let's say, 50%, uh, if you're hiring for an engineering role, then 50% male candidates and 50% female candidates. So at the mm. you tackle the problem all along the way. And the most important is obviously from the start, if you can tackle those things and you can put some constraints uh, well i call it constraint but if you can mm. some some um uh, principles rather than consider these are some principles you can put it that way then it, it makes a it mm. makes a lot of difference 
Okay, sure. So kind of having this idea set out from the beginning and, and making sure you're reiterating it to everyone that you're working with across the hiring process that this is something that you're kind of pushing and wanting to make a bit of a difference towards. What would you say um, is like the simplest change companies can make in order to create like a more inclusive workforce? Uh, so uh, if I get the qu question right, you're asking me what's the simplest change what we have done, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, in order was, to make it more inclusive. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> there was slightly a break. So, so again, going back to the same thing, there are there is there, there are for me uh, the psychological safety of the team is quite important, and that's always been the mm -hmm. case with with all uh, like with with this with the Machine Max leadership team. And we have always made it a point that one key value what we talk about is um, if you don't agree, let's open discuss, let, let's agree to disagree. However, once we have taken a decision, let's all work behind that decision and make that happen. So okay. that's always been the case. So, so for, from a diversity and inclusion standpoint also, these are the smallest, smallest steps what we have taken, like simple things. Um, making changes at the beginning of the funnel, for example, when the the manager who's hiring, um, there's always been the discussion about uh, making sure that we get different kind of uh, uh, candidates into the pipeline. And during the interview process as well, we include, uh, we always have a process in which we, there is a hiring manager and then there is a panel round. So in the panel right okay. round, in always include various uh, people uh, from various backgrounds. Mm. So when you see a diverse work culture, automatically the uh, the the, uh, the candidates who are coming in for the uh, interview process, etc., they are more convinced that it's not just you know they just see the people mm. same like themselves, and it make them it, it's yeah. thing, right? So yeah, that's the plan for us. And I suppose by doing the panel as well, it stops any bias within your kind of process also, kind of getting that mixed view from various people with obviously varying kind of opinions helps you kind of stop or eliminate any bias or bias towards any person or candidate. Absolutely. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. spot on on that. So it's not just the big. So we, I spoke about the whole funnel. So it's very, very part of the funnel. There are certain principles which we have put into the recruitment process and that has helped us recruit uh, and attract talent. OK, perfect. Um, so what would you say, like, obviously, when you are trying to create this culture of, you know, this inclusive culture, like what is the most, you know, overlooked part of creating that? <laughs> So I think uh, uh, there is something uh, I was reading it somewhere and, uh, you know, diversity can be a competitive advantage. For me, diversity mm. is actually great for business. And sometimes people yeah. just <laughs> tangle into this whole notion of, uh, you know, this is just one of those things, one of those initiatives which are needs to be done by L&D or HR. However, mm. it's top, like, I, I take the example of a couple of business leaders um, of late. We have seen, um, you know, uh, the, the, the women uh, leaders as well. But if in general, even I've seen a lot of male leaders who, if they have this notion correct that, you know, diversity can lead to more innovation, will, will, uh, will always lead to more innovation and it's a competitive advantage, you will see more diversity. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it, there was a McKinsey study done for 300 MNCs and they saw that the companies who were on the top quartile of uh, diversity, they had almost 35% more likely to be more innovative and likely to have more financial ad, uh, uh, returns. So it's not That's crazy. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's, when you start looking at the number and the empirical evidence lies in the numbers, then you realize mm. it's just a pep talk. It It is definitely <laughs> can move the needle for your business itself. Yeah, of course. It's more than just filling a quota. It's more than just kind of a tick box. Like it actually has so many benefits to it by having kind of a more diverse team and 
like I think one of the interviews that we did previously they were saying it helps kind of build a great product because you're getting if everyone fits in the same box you're not going to have kind of this very um variation in in opinion so there's more <laughs> there's more to it isn't it Absolutely. looking at the numbers like that is crazy that more Absolutely. There is something called, there's a notion of innovation revenues. And, and if you look at that notion, the, com- the teams who are more diverse result in more innovation revenues. And that I'm talking about pure uh, direct impact on numbers. I'm not talking about some notional uh, revenues. Mm-hmm. It's like the teams are more resilient, teams are more agile, and teams mm-hmm. are more, uh, they are more accurate and they lead to more innovation as well. Okay, so obviously one thing that, that I think you touched upon earlier briefly, um, you know, it, it's, it's great getting this talent on board and, and creating this diverse team, but what would you say, you know, kind of tips that you would give to people who are wanting to retain this talent that they attract? So you've, you've built this great team, but how do you get them to stay with you? Um, so I'm going to quote something from uh, my favourite book, The Little Prince. Uh, there is a notion that yeah, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up the people to gather wood, divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the wa- vast and endless sea. So it's more about like, you know, this, this, this resonates so much with me that if you want to have that kind, you have to build that kind of a culture. It's not a like you said, that it's not a tick box exercise or it's not just... Another thing which which we need, we are complying to be politically correct. If you want to really retain the talent, then you really need to walk the talk, right? And how do you walk the talk? <laughs> that it's not just about bringing people together and this is your set of things and this is as part of this diversity is another checkbox. You have to create that kind mm. of culture and that needs to come from within. And then, then it mm-hmm. becomes like it becomes organic, and that's that's what we saw it happening as well in Machine Max. That initial there was mm-hmm. um, the whole we put certain principles in place, and then we taught managers not to manage, <laughs> rather we yeah. inspired them, like you know that uh, this is actually making a difference. And and when they know, mm-hmm. they, they 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 you know any person who is um, high performing person. Would, would definitely see the evidence in the data and, and, and then work towards it. We, we don't come up, mm. we don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be anti-diverse today. It's just the culture and, and everyone around you just, then it makes it organic and gives you things mm. as well to, to make that happen, right? Mm. So like as a manager, you, you lead and manage by doing rather than by telling and it's like leading by example I suppose sure yeah. how like would you say it you know like how difficult is it to be able to achieve this like obviously you know you mentioned wanting like a 50 50 split in like talent polls obviously it's difficult like um how did you kind of go about it like how would you how difficult is an inclusive culture to achieve in a tech business uh, so it's easier for us to say these things because when we started from scratch and we made a conscious decision, I can understand for uh, companies who have a set of culture, the change management has always been difficult, right? But over a period yeah. of time, um, we've seen this this change which has come and the, the, uh, the whole new generation which is coming up and even we've seen, seen changes in the, in the uh, incumbents as well. So there are two parts to it, right? So one is when you're starting from scratch, it's very easy for us to say that, yes, we started right and we put this mm. place and then it is much more easier. And we see that happening in a lot of startups uh, who are coming up, um, their companies, uh, who are the, even the CEOs who are there, they, diversity is is becomes part of structure and, and, and it's an operational mm. imperative rather than just a PR strategy. And that's where I think the difference lies. Um, because. Yeah. So it has, if it's coming as a top down, people do realize that it is an operational imperative and it's not, um, it will make a difference 
uh, to their uh, so you know if i ask you today what is the most what, what, what's uh, people get or as a manager or as an employee we get stuck into this am i going to hit my numbers which i have been targeted for you know whatever whatever kpis you are having you would be more worried about it and diversity is something which is not give you immediate results like on achieving those kpis and yeah. if, if the top leadership or the pro- it's coming from top down then it becomes organic it becomes natural to talk about like you breathe you <clears throat> you, you go and drink coffee um it becomes part <laughs> of your um the whole uh, you know uh, the vibe becomes like that mm-hmm. and that's see the difference so it is difficult if you start yeah. it is probably more easier however i don't think so it's impossible to be achieved it's something which can definitely be achieved okay. if you get it right so yeah obviously you know you've come from bcg digital ventures which is obviously a large kind of um and obviously machine hacks being a startup and it as you mentioned is very easy when you're setting out the process to grow it in that way if there was someone watching this who is from like a larger kind of institution and, and is want to kind of impact it like what three tips would you give to them like on how, where to start um when it comes to a bigger kind of organization um my, uh, my take is always been uh, there is no silver bullet to it it has to be part and parcel of your culture it is a structural thing which which companies have to, and again we we spoke about it a little bit like do not treat mm. diversity as your pr crisis or strategy if you, if mm-hmm. it's only uh, lnd's responsibility or hr's responsibility then of course it's never going mm-hmm. to uh, you, you yeah that's that's not the uh, you will never be able to achieve that goal mm-hmm. and it has to people need to believe in it and and senior leadership needs to believe in it and when i say um, they they need to show again same thing are we trying to solve the real problems what are the numbers uh if you see the changes in the numbers that you that itself is an evidence that you know uh, mm. the, you're trying to solve the real problems and the consequences around it so create that kind of environment where people can talk about it and they don't feel um that they are only you know uh, this notion of the psychological mm. is there and at the same time um it is part of it, it is for everyone to deliver it it's not just hr or lnd's responsibility or dni's responsibility and it has to be a top down approach which leaders needs to believe in it okay so it all starts really for you on on this top level and as soon as kind of you can impact up here it will have a a, a change and further down the team that you get pretty much because what we are worried about in big companies is what is my kpi and how do i achieve it right pretty much most of the people talk mm. about it. as a middle manager this is what i want i'm here to achieve and if it becomes part of that uh, mm. notion is uh, the culture is there then yeah then you just uh, by osmosis you absorb it and you start to live breathe and talk about it in that way mm. okay don't leave it to your hr department don't leave it to your dni function get it <laughs> kind of envisioned in everyone totally <laughs> perfect um that was kind of some that really i think kind of the main essence of of this interview um kind of discussing kind of how we build this culture and how we can impact the team and i think it's something that you've done really nicely and i think a lot of people will learn from it thank you Is there anything else that you kind of want to you want to finish on or Yeah so I always uh, would like to end what Elon Musk always say uh, we all have choice and I choose to be extraordinary so take a choice to like be extraordinary yeah, <laughs> yeah I like that one <laughs> Thank you we will make a lot of changes I'm sure Yeah uh, no it was great talking to you Katie I I always I'm very okay. passionate about these things and you can see that we have you know we've done that and it's it's walk we are walking the talk in machine max so yeah uh, it's it's been amazing to talk to you again yeah. on this.